That's not a hard Yeah, Rob. Cheater. I'm kind of offended, Greg. I eat my words. What the hell? <laughs> so my nightmare came true. Someone made a video about me. That's right. Squeezed out the fun in life. And the woman in question is Kelty O'Connor. We're going to jump into it. Greg Duchette, Canadian bodybuilder. One of you sent me this message and my heart sank. I was like, oh no, what happened? What have I done wrong? As soon as you see a video, there's no worse sinking feeling than seeing a video has been made of you. You just pray it's good. But usually the internet doesn't like to post nice things about people. Greg, we all love him for his honesty. Am I about to have a therapy session? <laughs> Moral story, we're gonna watch him watching one of my videos and we're gonna react to it. I'm just nervous. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. I haven't said anything too controversial lately that I'm aware of. Okay, let's dive into this. And the woman in question is Kelty O'Connor. Very educated, high-level athlete, competed in all kinds of sports, looks absolutely phenomenal. She's educated, smart, great speaker, has amazing videos, and she's also a Gymshark sponsored model. And so her background came from being a high-level university athlete. We're talking about the best of the best here. Well, Greg, take me out for dinner first? Oh my God, thank you. I mean, okay, I feel so much better. I'm, I'm so touched. But first of all, he likes her channel, doesn't think I'm stupid. A bodybuilder complimented my body, I appreciate it. Wow, thank you. Canadians stick together, are we biased? Yes, because there's a very few of us. Will I ever hate on Linda or Will or anyone like, no, no. Because I'm like, you are your Canadian, do it. She looked amazing, looked great. Why would she need to have breast implants? I read something in the comments. So Greg got it. If you've been following my journey, I recently got the titties out. I originally got them because I got into bodybuilding and I did that for a couple of years with the intention that I needed a competitive outlet. After that, and I started working out post basketball ending and a lot of people started coming up like, do you compete, do you compete? And I was like, bing, bing, bing. Yeah, I was always interested in Nike commercials and videography and all that. So I thought that could be my end. So I started getting into it. First competition, I can't the exact thing but the judges literally said you look great I think I placed third in my first competition I can't remember and they were like you would have won if you just had more curves I can't remember how they said it but it was something they pretty much said get boobs without saying getting boobs and I'm very like if I have a goal I'll do anything if I have a goal so I was like I need to get boobs I'm getting boobs Greg gets that but I did see some comments and people were like well she clearly wasn't happy with her body if she got boobs and I'm not saying I was completely happy with my body I was going through just classic early 20s learning to accept my body as it is trying to train for aesthetics so I never got boobs with being like I hate my chest I'm self-conscious it was literally transactional Greg got it though and thank you for explaining that, but it was more for the people in these comments. I want to show them off. And I'm not, and she is certainly not saying there's anything wrong with getting breast implants. Yes. If you like boobies on you, I love boobies on you. Do you, Pikachu? Canadian dollars, that is. She is, after all, Canadian. Canadian content, people! Get it, Bill C11! Yay! And then <laughs> That's like the most niche reference to that bill, Greg. <laughs> that was amazing. I feel that was just like, just me and him. We're like, oh, I get it. There's this whole bill the Canadian government's trying to pass for uh, YouTubers. And if it does, you may never see me again. Because the algorithm is going to be, yeah, it's going to be the worst. But <laughs> oh, Please don't pass. Please don't pass. A little inside joke between me, Abby, Will, Linda, the gang. They asked her, hey, you're pretty lean. You do bikini competitions. Are you going to go all in? She says, no, I'm just bulking up to gain more muscle. Bulk and cut. That's how you put on muscle, right? Wrong. No, Greg, you're wrong. And I totally just did that to clip of the friend. <laughs> Then take over the world. Everything Greg says is right, but the all in comment was a little confusing. Context, I was an athlete, did bodybuilding for several years, did my fitness journey, got into YouTube, the YouTube Kelty you know. It was just this very brief six month period when I was crazy into fitness, I did this bulk. And it was actually my trainer at the time who was like, you've got a bulk. Let's just try and get you as jack as possible. Cause I was trying to compete at a national level, da 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 da. But the all in comment has been more a recent thing that I just constantly get on the internet. Like people are constantly like, Kelty, are you gonna go in just because I'm skinny and Stephanie Buttermore's journey? Which is amazing and she did it. But sometimes I'm like, guys, I'm not in calorie deficit. So I do eat intuitively. Now I did before, but there was that like brief little bit, but like, do you know what I mean? The all in had nothing to do with the bulk to satiety. I was like, here's satiety, I was gone. <sighs> way past that. She did a dirty bulk. The dirtiest of the dirt. The father's mustache. We have a father's mustache restaurant in Halifax. Got a lot of dirty bulking. Oh my god, that was the most nostalgic 
nostalgic thing of my entire life. Your father's mustache. Greg, I used to go there all the time because I went to St. Mary's, so SMU, for a couple of years. Oh my God. That was like the most nostalgic moment. I don't know why I never knew Greg was from Halifax. My Halifax people might have to come back. That just took me right back, like five years. <laughs> Burger week. I might have to come back for burger week. Oh. Quit basketball, of which she was an elite athlete in, and said, I need to do something. And so she chose weightlifting, did the dirty bulk. Oh God, it was just, and there's nothing wrong with gaining 30 pounds, but like it, in that fast of a time, it's not how, and like I said, it's 25% of my weight I did not sit pretty. <laughs> I also experienced what they call being a hard gainer. Well, she thought she was a hard gainer. You know, every single person who doesn't put on 50 pounds of muscle in about four weeks thinks that they're a hard gainer. She says, you know, I was always an explosive athlete, you know, fast twitch muscle fibers, long and lean, you know, basketball player, track athlete, you know, someone with a hard time putting on muscle. That's not a hard time putting on muscle. That's an easy time. And so you, in fact, are an easy gainer. Just because you don't look like an IFB pro. Touche. I have never thought of it like that. I've always called myself a hard gainer because like I said I got freakishly long arms. I don't carry weight in my legs. I have a long torso. So I just don't really put on weight. Could eat a lot to maintain my weight. I also call that fast metabolism. So I've always called myself a hard gainer. But then when I look at it and I'm like, I did explosive exercise. I did track. Volleyball is very jumpy and speed. Okay. I eat my words. I'm not a hard gainer. That will thank you. Thank you for that compliment. I'm competing after training for two years. Winning shows natural and I'm a hard gainer. It's so funny looking back like in modern out of the bodybuilding world, putting on like half pound to two pounds of muscle a year is like awesome. But in the bodybuilding world, it's like hard gainer. Go, go, go. Also, I'm kind of offended, Greg. Kind of offended that you just assumed that was natural. <laughs> Like everyone else in comments is like, natty or not. It was just like, oh, there is no way this girl's on it. Like just looking at her body like, no, I am natural, always have been. But I mean like, that would've been nice. She could be on natty. Look at how- Yoked I am! <laughs> how could you not think I'm natty? 10 years of weight training. Look at this baby. Oh. I am natty, but I mean that would have been like, you know, been like, oh, maybe she's not. Like, look at those games. <laughs> There's never been a Reddit thread that said it's Kelty natty or not. Let's just put it that way. They barely look like they've been worked out despite training for many years. Those are the hard gainers of the world. He has his master in kinesiology in case you didn't know, but that, because I'm long, I've always considered myself a hard gainer, but then I am very like fast twitch, which would mean kind of the opposite. So yeah, I guess I'm not. Wow. Great, just in one moment changed everything I know about myself. <laughs> Bulking and cutting, which is known as yo-yo dieting in the real world. The reason why 95% of diets fail. It's a really weird thing in the bodybuilding world that there's such extremes in bulking and cutting. I don't know if it is like that anymore. I've really separated myself from it. But what I really do like about Greg is started this like trend of being a bodybuilder in focus, but also a balanced approach that like you said, so much of bodybuilding was like gain 20, 30 pounds and then diet like crazy and then binge after your show and repeat, which taken out of the bodybuilding context and just putting in a normal person is yo-yo dieting. Inspect him so much for just narrating that because I just think like young girls and guys getting into it. I would put myself back in those shoes like I'll do anything at any cost and it was so damaging and I was lucky that I just did it once. I don't know how but for whatever reason I was self-aware enough in that moment to be like yo yo this is a yoga diet but yeah and I completely agree and he nailed the he got it right. I tried to think of a metaphor and I failed. Approximately 25% of those competing in sports involving weight classes will suffer from eating disorders. Okay, that is a crazy stat. If you're gonna get into bodybuilding and also do that, that's, just realize that's a sacrifice. MMA is very like that. Any like weight focused sport, you do risk that. There's sacrifices in any high level thing and that's one like you're pretty much have a 25% chance of sacrificing your relationship with food. You can still do it, just I think it sets you up for success just being self-aware and putting in tools if you're gonna get into bodybuilding. You start eating worse and worse, thinking you're gonna put on a ton of muscle, but eventually you're now going to have to cut. Oh, I'll just cut back a few calories for a couple weeks, I'll be shredded. It is not the case. That was also like, I don't know why it did dawn on me that like, yeah, you bulk and put on extra fat to hopefully put on a little bit extra muscle, 
But say you put on three pounds of muscle instead of the two you would have done just doing like a lean bulk, like eating a little bit of surplus. Then when you diet, what happens when you diet? You lose muscle. So that one pound, so it's like you did all this extra work, messed around with your hormones, relationship with food for what? Versus like the slow and steady. And so doesn't it make more sense to just be healthy year round? To do cardio from start to finish? Or should you listen to all this advice from so many YouTubers saying, don't do cardio in the off season? Round for Greg. This is so nice to hear. It's so refreshing because when I was in the thick of it, like I was scared to do cardio because there was like horror stories, these bikini girls doing like two to three hours of cardio a day. And so the idea was in your office, any cardio, say I was doing half an hour a day, then suddenly at the start of your prep, you're gonna have to start with a half an hour versus starting with 15 minutes versus like you should do cardio for your health and to be athletic. So nice hearing someone who's a bodybuilder who's done it for so long, still encouraging cardio for just health. I got some comments, people being like 2,800, 3,500 calories isn't that much. It, it's not like, for example, that's very common for me now, but what I was doing, if you didn't watch my original video, is I was sitting completely sedentary all day and just doing like a 60 minute weight workout. Total daily energy expenditure, TDEE, significantly dropped because I wasn't walking around. I wasn't, like I was scared to move. Versus now, I can eat that much without even like going to the gym just because of my natural movement throughout the day. Like that's how much I was like, do anything, just sit. Just sit, cause you're gonna lose your gut. That's so stupid. <laughs> ah. Six weeks of strict dieting, calculating all your calories, macros, and then the cheat, free for all. Perhaps an entire day or a single meal. Were you? Ooh, that was also the other thing. It was the 2,800 to like 3,500 calories plus a cheat meal once a week, which I went like all out. I just thought that would help. I just, like I'd eat my 2,800, 3,500 and then go for the cheat meal. Oh God, oh, ugh. She literally felt more athletic partying and dancing every night in the clubs than she did while bulking up for bikini competitions. And then none of her clothes fit. You end up having to rebuy everything, having three different outfits. And so what do you think the fitness industry would prefer? Oh, I didn't rebuy anything. I wore two things. <laughs> <laughs> it was also no one talks about it's like I had this one pair of burgundy pants and one pair of sweatpants these two hoodies and like three t-shirts and that's all I wore for like six months and I remember trying these pants on when I got back to like my regular way and they were my regular size but I just stretched them out because they grew with me Oh my God, they looked like trousers. They didn't look like leggings anymore. Oh. That you remain at about the same body fat percentage, whatever is healthy for you and slowly put on muscle, or would they prefer you bulk and cut? Bulk Maskator 2000, cut fat burner this. And so you go. Okay, also mind blowing. I never thought, of, I always think about this from the weight loss industry, but I guess the fitness industry and even like the bodybuilding industry is like, there's an entire, economy built on you gaining and losing weight. You have to buy more clothes. You have to buy all those supplements. I remember I had to buy so many supplements. And obviously the weight loss industry is like that. They get you to lose weight really severely so you can't maintain it. So you gain it all back. So you have to go on the diet again. Finance wise, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, clearly healthier to remain healthy year round. And love fitness industry now talking about like the different areas of wellness and health what i really respect greg for is like yeah physical health mental health but there's also like emotional spiritual social health as well i've never had a worse social life and i'm an extrovert when i was at my like peak in that bulk i remember not going out because i didn't want i felt like crap i didn't want to go see people and because i didn't see people i'm an extrovert i didn't get energy so i started to like lose energy because i wasn't around people and i was isolating myself so then because i was isolating myself i felt like i had less energy so I didn't want to socialize so it became this like vicious cycle for like eight months and I remember just being in like the worst place it took me years to figure out how to be able to diet and not be miserable I respect him so much that like he openly talks about the drugs that are in bodybuilding like I was natural but there's so many people that aren't and I think sometimes the conversation can go really toxic where like constantly like, you're not you're not I think that can be toxic but at the same time I think it's the same as like Photoshop and all that it's like at least we're all becoming aware because I think about five, ten years ago, no one was aware that people could Photoshop, pose differently, lighting, taking drugs, starving themselves, whatever. We didn't even know that was a thing. I remember looking at these people like, how the hell do they look like that? 
And just being like, that's so unattainable. And now fast forward, I was like, oh, that was completely photoshopped or it was the best lighting or you don't look like that all day long. Like every photo I post, that's my one of 300 I took. Like, I think we're just becoming more educated on that because people are having these conversations versus just like pretending it's not happening and people are doing it in a dark room. So you can look at someone like, we'll use the IFBB pro bodybuilder and be like, not to take away from their work or what they achieved, but one of the sacrifices they did was they did drugs. At least we're talking about it now. And being aware doesn't mean promote it. I'm not saying go and do drugs or anything. I think it's just, it's nice we all know when we see people who do that being, ah, not natty, natty. <laughs> also, I've just put <laughs> Greg in the background is a supplement company. Nice. Great, Brandon. Looks awesome. I trust the quality is probably amazing. And also that we have more regulations in Canada than in the US. Usually it tends to be better quality, but versus I just realized what's in the back of mine. I just made it, I'm not set up. I, I still need to set up my studio, but there's my, my tequila bar in the back. But I'm in the fitness industry. You give yourself permission to have fun, to let loose, to go to those restaurants, to eat the pizzas, the burgers, whatever you want, but not all the time. Something also I've noticed in the fitness industry lately, and I've just said I've reflected on a lot, like I preach balance on my channel, but I'm trying to also not just like preach it so easily because it's not simple. I think a lot of us in the fitness industry who've kind of, you know, have followings have nailed it because we went through shit. Like we went through all the crap. And if you look at someone, anyone on YouTube where you're like, wow, these seem to, you know, enjoy going out, going to Europe, all this. You just have so many tools and you can learn them from watching other people's mistakes or you kind of just have to go through it. So if right now you're sitting there and being like, wow, I wish I could just balance like eating healthy, but then incorporating fun food. How do I do that balance of going out and drinking, but not, you know, binging all night. Talk to a professional, just be self-aware and figure out what works for you, but just don't beat yourself up if you're looking at like fitness YouTube and be like, why am I not as balanced? Cause it also shouldn't be a con contest of like who is the most balanced and, and that really had nothing to do with Greg I've just had this boop, boop, boop moment oh you have to do that hard bike race I can't wait to do that hard bike race do you really want to spend eight ten thousand dollars on something you don't need just because you're trying to win a show does that not sound a lot like when a male competitor takes PDs because they were told you're not big enough oh I wish Greg was 21 year old Kelty's dad and when I was like, yeah, no, I'm gonna get breast implants so I can win my competition, he'd be like, what are you thinking? It, like, it's so stupid looking back, but like I was young and dumb and like, oh my God, I wish Greg, I wish Greg was my dad would be like, what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> I needed that. Okay, here's a question. Was I natty if I got breast implants? Breast implants are natural. Guys, I'm not natty. I'm natty now. Natty. But uh, I mean, technically, I don't know. <laughs> For the haters right in the comment section, let me be clear because I've been clear in 35 videos and people still don't understand. If you're shredded already, as in you're too lean, single digit body fat, you don't have energy, low sex drive, can't sleep, mood swings, you need to eat more. Ooh, yeah, there is times you have to gain weight for health. Just like there's times you need to lose weight for health. There's nothing about you as a character. It's just being better than you are. Remember to progressive overload, which means to work harder than last time in everything you want in life, whether it's your gym, your jobs, relationship. That's it, progressive overload, mood every day. Do some cardio, eat your fruits and veggies, get some protein, drink enough water, sleep, go out, have fun, enjoy life. And it's really all it is. And I just wanna say thank you, Greg for not tearing me apart. I was worried. I'm very honored. I feel very flattered. I appreciate him reviewing my video. And honestly, I just thought this would be fun because if you didn't know if I'm talking weird, I got tooth pulled yesterday. I've just been chill. I'm sit down video. And Greg, thank you. Let's do a collab one day. If you see this, I don't know if you will, but <laughs> I thought that'd be fun. Or who wants that? Who wants that? Your father's mustache. Oh my God. Halifax say one day. Fitness YouTube's in this funny place right now. I feel like it's a lot of just crazy thumbnails and all that. And we kind of have to, it's just the reality. We're funny with TikTok or we're just trying to keep afloat right now. <laughs> we're just like, oh my God. Appreciate the fitness YouTube and even like the bodybuilding side is still so balanced. Canadian content creators love us, but more importantly, love you. Hope you have a great day. If you're new here from Greg, feel free. You can pop down the subscribe button. Or if you didn't like this content, that's fine. I'm not offended. I'll see you one other time. <laughs> Hope you have a great day. Go pet dog. Love you guys. Bye.